Dear audience, welcome to the show Power Chat. In today's episode, we will be discussing about the university education system in Nepal with particular focus on open university system. Joining us today is Professor Lekhnath Sarma, Vice Chancellor at Nepal Open University. Please allow me to welcome him. Welcome to the show, Professor Sarma. Thank you, Lakshman sir. How it's uh, my pleasure to be with you. Some of the uh, matters related to my university and the higher education itself. Well, uh, you have been into the field of uh, academics and research for many years, many decades in fact, and recently leading Nepal Open University. How do you analyze the overall education uh, system of Nepal as such? I think overall higher education system in Nepal is not uh, very old compared to other countries. It is about 60 years old formally. So, uh, Usually in Nepal, when higher education started, it was like a teaching, it's, it's only for teaching purpose, focusing on teaching, not in research. And right now also, uh, we see the focuses of universities, focuses of higher education is basically on teaching rather than research, but there are certain components that are related to research, especially for the graduate uh, study writing thesis and doing some research project. And another important thing is that uh, the funding is very, very poor compared to other countries' higher education system. You mean that uh, the university education as such, uh, that of the conventional one, uh, has not been able to meet the market demand uh, in terms of the human resources produced by the university? Actually, sometimes uh, I do become very confused and, uh, regarding the market need. What is the human resource uh, market sometimes? Because uh, our market uh, is very small, very narrow compared to other countries. However, there are complaints uh, in the uh, in the market or uh, um, among the peoples, uh, whether they are politicians as well as students and other stakeholders. They say that the education, uh, the higher education institution in Nepal are providing, are not very relevant to the present day's needs. But what exactly is the present day's need? We have not made any such researches. Uh, but uh, from my own experiences. Uh, uh, I can say something uh, about the, the market need of higher education right now. That is, uh, especially uh, our education, higher education concentration is on liberal arts uh, sort of education. But uh, the tendency of higher education in other world is on technical, vocational, science, STEAM orientation is higher. Here in Nepal, only 13% students are studying in higher education. So while we are talking about the development and we need to be more focused on the STEM area, uh, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And uh, so people are saying uh, the education we are pro providing from uh, higher education institution in Nepal are not relevant to the market needs. Well, you are leading the newly formed Nepal Open University. It's been one year that the concept has been materialized and recently the programs were launched a few weeks ago. Could you tell us about the open university programs and uh, its you know, uh, need in the context of Nepal? Actually, the open university's need was felt during 2037. It was uh, a very, very many years back. But only it came into existence in 2073 when Nepal Open University. You mean in the Bikram Sambat, Bikram era? Yes, okay. Only in Bikram Sambat, I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, why this open university is needed uh, in the context of Nepal? Um, it is very apparent that uh, only 17% uh, age cohort of higher education they are joining in higher education, the rest are not. So, in order to provide access uh, of higher education to mass people, it is necessary. Another thing 
there are many uh, people who are working in their own professions or in their, their job and there are others who are not able to participate in conventional form of higher education by different reasons that may be some uh, family reason maybe economic reason maybe other reasons so targeting to this population those who are deprived from the conventional form of higher education uh, is this is the alternative to them professor so sarma what are the major distinction between the conventional mode of education especially that of the higher one and uh, the open university system the the major difference is, is uh, the distance you know especially in uh, in conventional mode of higher education students and teachers do sit together interact and learn do project together interact and learn but in open system the educational provision is made uh, anytime anywhere anybody it is called so open university is philosophy is anytime anywhere anybody but while talking about distance the anybody is not considered anytime anywhere is possible in distance so this is the main differences between this uh, uh, conventional university and the open university anytime anywhere means teachers and students are not being together at the same place and at the same point of time and for anybody means in conventional form of education there are certain requirements uh, for getting admission but if we follow the philosophy of the open education system then we should not uh, do that sort of activity that sort of demarcation that you are not allowed to get admission in open university but in our case we are not in that position if you read the history of open university uk they have given uh, opportunity of admission for anyone and they can develop their uh, uh, their academic excellences competencies and potentials and according to their level they are upgraded and upgraded and they will be graduated so that should be the a uh, policy that should be the provision in uh, fairly open university system but in our case we are not uh, doing that very much open right now we are still open university but we are still distance and online form why so uh, happening i mean you are leading the open university but you said that you are uh, approaching your programs in line with distance learning yes it's a paradox here <laughs> because uh, it is because of our belief system the prevailing belief system in nepal people think that uh, when uh, people are graduated from open uh, university systems they are second rated in quality and if i give very open access to all from the very beginning then the rumor will come again oh this is university and uh, giving university education higher education research based education but getting admission to anyone anybody of any level is no quality so that type of uh, critique that type of uh, rumor may excel uh, in this context and the university will be in trouble so for for the time being we are not doing that much uh, making it very very open but our philosophy is to make it more open so we will do it in future but in this piloting phase and in this few years or uh, one or two years we will be uh, following as uh, the require entry requirements of the other conventional university follow the more or less the same what are uh, the major programs offered by uh, nepal open university Uh, right now uh, we have uh, three faculties uh, one is um, uh, social science and education another one is management and law and another one is science health and technology so right now we have we have offered uh, uh, educational program in uh, two faculties especially uh, social sciences and education and uh, another one is from uh, science health and technology so Uh, social, from social science and education, we have offered MPhil in six subjects, uh, and there is postgraduate diploma too, and then there are some uh, diploma programs.
under this social science uh, and education stream. Uh, uh, the, the, the subjects are, one is library and information management, that is diploma, and postgraduate diploma, that is distance and e-learning, and another in uh, they are in mathematics, uh, education especially, and Nepali language, English language, and English also, economics and sociology. So these are the areas uh, open for MPhil. And uh, in another faculty, science and technology, right now there is MPhil in IT, one, another one is a master's in e-governance. So there are some courses that are, uh, I do not say very new, but that are not drawn in other universities. Let's say MPhil in IT, e-governance, uh, uh, diploma in library and information management and postgraduate diploma in distance and e-learning. So these are the new courses we have offered from these two uh, faculties. And very recently in July we are going to open uh, other programs. Uh, uh, it is about uh, 45 programs we are targeting but that depends upon our resources so we will be more selective uh, among these uh, 45 programs and that will be from management and law too. How do you enroll uh, students coming to different streams? Is there a particular academic session uh, similar to the conventional universities or you uh, enroll them at any time? Uh, right now we have not uh, been that uh, at any time uh, provisions. Uh, we have uh, two uh, sessions right now. One is uh, February session, we take admission, and another is July. So, in a year, we take two um, intake. So, two intake we will take. And uh, for getting admission, uh, when uh, we, we, we give call for the admission and they apply online, the students apply online, then uh, we will take entrance examination also. And after um, uh, getting that entrance examination, uh, uh, we select on the basis of the merit. Well, Professor Sharma, you said that there are many rumors about the open university education system as such. People suspect about its programs. What are your plans as such as the Vice Chancellor and what are the major you know, strategies of the open university to neutralize such suspects? and project the university um, in such a way that it is unique and it could contribute towards the academic and research culture of Nepal. Yes, uh, first of all, we are very much concerned on giving access as well as quality also. And uh, the matter of equity also comes there. But right now we cannot address that equity issues very well because of the funding modality from the uh, from the government side, and that is one part. So regarding the rumor, uh, uh, the rumor of uh, the educational program, the quality uh, issue is especially uh, related to um, open university graduates. Uh, first of all, we would like to make a campaign. Uh, sort of awareness to different uh, stakeholders. So the employers group, the different institutions, uh, um, let's say public service commissions, university service commission and other service commissions uh, uh, people, we want to inform them how our program is running and uh, that is one sort of uh, giving our and our clarification that how we can ensure quality uh, to our education system that is uh, open distance and online and more so especially the quality education depends upon uh, from the very beginning of designing the curricula so uh, the curricula uh, matter we will disseminate what how, what type of curriculum we are uh, providing to our students and then come comes uh, the infrastructures so educational infrastructure is very, very important things uh, to ensure quality of education. So we, are, we, we will inform them yet that we are using um, uh, advanced sort of uh, information and commun commun communication technology, uh, especially innovation made through information and communication technology in education. So we are using this learning management system, uh, Moodle and other systems. Uh, there is a designated hour 
uh, to our faculties that uh, they have to be online with their students and students come and interact with the teachers. So uh, the, the mode of interaction, the mode of uh, support for learning to the students, it is made one-to-one -one tutoring sort of thing. So only the difference is distance. Uh, all the others, uh, other approaches used in conventional mode of education is adapted here. Similarly, we have developed, uh, we have established a library, a very rich e library. We are going to um, disseminate um, very soon because right now it is in trial phase because we are uh, in the process of procurement, pro uh, following the procurement process uh, to, sub to subscribe uh, the e-books, e-journal, even it is uh, bequest, the dissertation uh, uh, things. So we are giving very good library to our students. Uh, and another thing, uh, the quality control depends upon how the assessment system is uh, used uh, in, the, in the education system, assessment and evaluation. When the 40% uh, of the total wages of uh, evaluation goes to individual uh, tutor, the professor, they evaluate uh, on the basis of the assignment uh, given to the students and the small test given during teaching and learning. So that could cover 40%. Uh, Another 60% our students have to come to uh, the center, designated center uh, from the university to give written examination. Uh, similarly, uh, our mode of learning is uh, focused more on project, problem based, inquiry and case based. Because we need to do this because our students, they are, they, they are working in some institution maybe working in uh, some firms, some companies, government office, t schools, universities, somewhere. So uh, we, will in, we will encourage our students to develop the project related to their uh, field of study. So professionally also, we want to make them uh, competent. Uh, we want to help them to enhance their uh, capacity, uh, professional capacity as well as other capacity where they are working. So our focus is a bit more on research orientation too. Well, so uh, Professor Sabha, you touched upon uh, the idea of research. Do you think that uh, the university programs could contribute to our academic research culture? Actually, uh, research culture is um, the, the value system that is uh, strong um, beliefs and practices in educational process. Uh, that is the culture, that is the educational culture in every university. And one university and the other university uh, will be differentiated on the basis of the research culture, the educational culture they adapted. While adapting uh, research culture, research-based education, we need one on the one side, the policy part, another side, the infrastructural structural part and another the individual so uh, in my case uh, uh, in my case uh, especially in my university case when students they are the graduate students especially research focused students and field students phd students what they have to do they have to make publication in the in peer reviewed journal ranked journal and that has uh, that has created uh, one, let's say it's a pressure to the students in one way, or the system itself, the policy itself uh, is made receptive uh, to follow research tradition from the side of the student as well as from the side of the teachers. And in our rules, uh, the university professor, those who are teaching there as a full-time faculty, they have to produce uh, at least one research paper uh, in one academic year. So all these things uh, means that uh, from the policy side also we have uh, we have inspired both faculties and uh, students uh, to come to uh, this research um, cultures. How do you collaborate with the other academic institutions, universities here in Nepal and the other open university system across the world? Yeah, yeah. Do you have any plan on that? Yeah. Uh, I am very much uh, interested in collaboration with other university abroad. I have a uh, thinking in my mind that inbreeding, uh, um, 
means that studying in the one in the same the same university and being a teacher in the same university and working for many years in the same university that doesn't bring any departures in education process in quality in research in thinking anything uh, before also when i was working in tibuan university i had uh, been working in three collaborative uh, project i have to say with the universities in europe uh, and others so from that also what i learned that if i do collaboration with other universities then i can uh, i can share the culture of education the pattern they follow the tradition they follow the technology they use the methods they use uh, in, in their uh, part and they also learn from al us also so um uh, regarding giving value to international collaboration to other university and research uh, from policy part of my university uh, this time we have made a collaboration with uh, four universities right now one is with uh, just we have signed the mou and started to work uh, in a, we are in the very initial phase what is from uto university US, us um, this collaboration will work on health science stream and another uh, one is destier university and nla university destier is from netherland and nla is from an, uh, norway uh, we are working together uh, with them in teacher education so to make teacher education more you know a quality oriented uh, and another one is uh, demsu we call the in short form don maria something it's a very long name uh, uh with that university in philippines uh, that university is a very renowned there for entrepreneur type of uh, education especially in hotel management and other management so we have met collaboration uh, mou with that university so in in the future we will uh, be collaborating uh, in hotel management and other entrepreneurial type of education so with that university so Uh, from the very beginning we have started uh, this uh, international collaboration uh, for ensuring quality education even it is open and distance mode uh, education it has that mode of education well uh, do you have any plan reaching out to uh, all you know federal setups uh, here in nepal uh, so that uh, you know the students trying to approach your university could benefit from your programs uh, yes uh, uh, we have made uh, a decision from our senate first first senate has made a decision to establish seven provincial study centers so in our uh, university act we cannot give any affiliation to any other institution just we can establish our study center and then also we can collaborate with other other higher education institution um to work together uh, to launch uh, open university program we can do collaboration so uh, to reach to the provincial level and even to the uh, in the, even in the very remote uh, areas so we will establish this study center the main study center in our seven provinces and beyond that on the basis of the clusters of the students we can establish learning center there so we will do these two things to reach even to the uh, people in remote areas well professor uh, there are many things to discuss very interesting uh, things coming out from your mind but we are coming to the end of the show do you have anything to say to our audience very quickly uh, that i have left to ask you yeah um, uh, just uh, one uh, on behalf of um, tv today and on behalf of um, lakshman ji Uh, i want to uh, give one message that nepal open university is the university established by the government is the public institution and the education provides provided from this university uh, is as soon as the other conventional university systems uh, provides so i want to give this message message to our audience as well as to our students as well as other stakeholders that uh, never be confused and sometimes people ask me it is on the tribhuvan university or it is uh, an independent to no. other other universities are uh, people are putting that questions to me so this is the, the nepal university is government funded public university and 
the education it provides a is quality education uh, i want to uh, ensure through your media and to you and i will endeavor uh, whatever i can do to ensure quality education from my institution well uh, yes, professor sarma it was pleasure talking to you thank you very much for joining us welcome lakshmanji and thank you very much uh, for providing this opportunity um, for making a very small discussion um, regarding the pal open university the audience time now to wrap up the show keep watching us see you next week namaste